Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back after a short break. Our today's topic for discussion is supplication, the weapon of the believer. Before we went into the break, we were discussing the importance of dua, the definition of dua, and as Muslim, how seriously do we take dua? If you do have any questions related to the topic, feel free to dial the telephone number, which will be appearing at the bottom of your TV screen in a short while. Now, one thing we do notice, what we have understood from our first segment is, the utmost importance or act of worship is one of the first things that we should do as soon as we're inflicted or as soon as there is any challenges that we need to call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and then rely upon the means and method that are there prescribed in the world. We'll continue our discussion with this topic. Now, Sheikh, before we went into the break, you did touch upon dua to be the act of ibadah. Yes. Now, there is one element that I would strongly touch upon is Whenever we are in a state of happiness that mm. Allah has blessed us with a ni'mah or a mm. blessing, yes, we tend to, maybe not intentionally, but we forget to yeah. be thankful, grateful yeah. Yeah. to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving yeah. us. Yeah. And we do notice that we have the tendency that we only remember, Allah, remember Allah subhanahu wa at the time of at the calamity. Diffi difficulties, yes. Now, what sh should be our right approach? Uh, Allah the Almighty he mentioned in the Holy Quran the people, uh, when they are happy, they forget Allah, and when they're in difficulties, they remember Allah and they go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we must realize that the true, a true servant of Allah and true da'i, a, a, a true supplicator is the one uh, uh, who asks Allah the Almighty even though he's in happy moments. So Prophet sallallahu said in the hadith, مَنْ سَرَّهُ أَنْ يَسْتَجِيبْ اللَّهُ لَهُ عِنْدَ الشَّدَائِدِ وَالْكُرْبِ فَلْيُكْثِرِ الدُّعَاءَ فِي الرَّخَاءِ if anybody wants his dua to be accepted generally, then let him make dua at the time of ease. Let mm -hmm. him make dua at the time of ease. So an important hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam um, teaching us to make dua at the time of ease. Um, talking about dua again, uh, dua is, is, is one of the most important tools that we have. And, and it's, it's very easy to do it. There is not any... Uh, you know, efforts to make dua. It's just there, you just need to talk to Allah the Almighty. There's not any veil between me and my Lord. It's just that I need to tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, directly. It opens up the conversation with our Creator. Absolutely. So we establish a form of communication with Allah subhanahu yes. wa ta'ala by establishing ourselves in the form of dua. Yes, yes. And Prophet sallallahu said in a hadith, the inna dua huwa al-ibadah, that indeed supplication itself is a form of worship. Dua nizayat ibadah. In another hadith, Prophet said that um, uh, he said in a hadith that dua silahul mu'min, that dua is a weapon of a believer, which is the topic of our today tonight discussion. So dua silahul mu'min, manushir hatiyar. Exon Muminer Hatir Logi Dua, a Dua Selah al Mu'min. Why made the Deen among Diner Stumbo? It's a pillar of, of, of religion. Unur Samawati Wal Ard, among this is a light for the heavens and the earth. Um, so, so Duas are important before we take any necessity measurement in this world. First thing, even though we may not be able to see it, but we can ask Allah the Almighty, whatever state we may be in, we can ask Allah, oh Allah, write me to the right direction. Oh Allah, cure my illness. Oh Allah, grant me success. Oh Allah, um, you know, uh, protect me from that difficulties or protect me from that musibah that I'm in. Now, uh, some people, they have, uh, uh, they might have question like, well, I'm making so much dua. Now, this you know. is before moving down, yeah. is it? This is one of the common questions that we hear yeah. on most of the television shows mm -hmm. which are Islamic programs mm -hmm. uh, in general mm -hmm. that the Ummah is in a difficult state yes yes and the calamity as soon as we open up in a news channel or any channel we mm -hmm. do see it's physically there mm -hmm. to see that the calamities yes, are yes, happening yes, yes. the masajids are making dua mm -hmm. the important masajid the harams mm -hmm. the haramains mm -hmm. the uh, the big ulama the shuyukh mm -hmm. they are very respected and well known are making dua a lot of other the whole ummah are making dua mm -hmm. in general for the calamities and trials and tribulations that are taking place in part of the world and to make it to a personal level people when they are afflicted with any challenges say for instance as, the, as you have rightly mentioned about um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the one who gives us the children the mm -hmm. offspring yes now a lot of time we do notice that 
I'm making so much of dua, but yeah, but it's not being accepted. So yes, how do so, we know? So or is there any requirement, or is there anything that can direct mm -hmm. us towards or indicate that our dua is accepted? Yes. Um. So uh, we we need to our responsibility is to present, to make the petition, ask Allah, invoke, supplicate. This is our responsibility. Um. Uh, we make dua. But we sh must not forget that every dua is accepted. Every dua that mm -hmm. we make to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is accepted. But it just may be the timing. I want at a certain time certain things to happen. But it's not going to happen because it's not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, he, 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 it's not the right time. Because as human beings, we're very impatient. Y impatient. We, went, we want our dua to be accepted there and then. Yeah, yeah. And our knowledge is limited. We, we want certain things at certain times, but maybe it's not the right time. So Allah the Almighty accept all the du'as. So there is a hadith of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, on the authority of Abu Sa'id. Uh, Abu Sa'id and the Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal, ma min muslimin yad'u bida'watin laysa fiha ithm wala qati'at rahim illa a'tahu Allahu biha ihda thalaf. So whenever a believer makes du'a to Allah, supplicate, and in that du'a there is not any, anything that is sinful. So there's not a sinful request. So dua has to be within the permissibility and within the good things. Just to clarify, it means things that are prohibited or things that are we not are not allowed to ask Allah mm. subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us. So there is no anything that is sinful in this dua. And also we, we, we don't disconnect from the relatives of kinship. Mm -hmm. A very important mm -hmm. thing. Rel relationship of kinship is very important. So Allah, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa saying, we, whenever we make dua, and in that dua there is not anything sinful, and the person who's making dua, he doesn't disconnect himself from his rel relatives of kinship. Then Allah the Almighty will accept his dua, but in three different ways. Number one, imma an tu'ajjala lahu da'watuhu. It could be that his duas will be instantly accepted and he will find the results. He will get the results st straight away, instantly. Wa imma an lahu fil akhira. Or it could be that his dua will be postponed will be accepted but you will be postponed to akhirah so you will get something in return from Allah but it will come in a different form in akhirah or it could be that when he makes dua Allah the Almighty will give him something else meaning he will remove maybe something that is harmful Replaces. replace with something that is something which which could harm him or afflict him so never ever we can say our duas are not accepted but it's just the way we make dua how we make dua what what is the time what is the condition what's my state am i humble enough am i am i you know am, am i humiliated in front of allah when i'm making dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all those things have to be made sure before we make dua also we have to make sure whether we are taking halal or not we are, our, is our income halal? Is our this food is halal? This is a very our... important factor that you have yeah. touched upon. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the timings when we say that our du'as are not accepted, and we do notice then the the means to reach to a du'a that mm -hmm. is accepted. Mm -hmm. Now, people are not, the incomes or the source of income might not be from a yeah. legitimate sources as defined by the Qur'an. Very important du'as to be accepted. We I, I understand that we live in a society where finding halal, food is, is pretty difficult it's not halal always job, easy halal, halal jobs or halal income or even halal food like to find completely 100 percent halal we we, we we go through some some difficulties but we have to try our best and we all need to work we all every one of us need to work and i urge really i from the bottom of my heart uh, i request our people in our community uh, as a brother in Islam and as a brother in humanity, that I would like to request our people to come out of any kind of haram, impermissible business. We sometimes or even jobs. Yeah, jobs. We sometimes think that oh, what if I leave that? You know, Allah will not give me. No. Allah the Almighty gives, but you have to fear Him and you have to rely on Him. I remember um, just relate, it's related to this this subject, uh, Brother Junaid Jamshed. Who was a, 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 a rahimahullah, uh, who was a, a top uh, uh, musician in Pakistan, and he said in one of his lectures that uh, Allah the Almighty gave me everything in return because I sacrificed for Allah. So he gave up whatever he had in the in the previous the, life. The past profession in, in his, he was yes, involved with. He gave up. He sacrificed. He even was bankrupt. Then Allah the Almighty says, eventually, one by one, he gave me everything back. 
So that shows So I would like to urge our people, our brothers who are involved or you know, in, in kind of impermissible or haram like jobs or business should try their best to come out. And, and believe me, Allah provides. Allah provides and we can't be hopeless. And it's a practical thing if the Quran says it clearly. What is the word of truth above Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yeah. Now it all depends on the trust that we have in Allah subhanahu trust. wa ta'ala. Trust. And the constant effort, the yes. constant work of looking into something that is better than what it is into now. Absolutely correct. Um, so, um, so our du'as are accepted. We can't be despair and we can't be hopeless. Uh, but there is an important saying of a great uh, scholar of Islam uh, called Ibrahim ibn Adham al-Balkhi. He was a very pious individual. He was asked uh, by some people, ما بالنا ندعو فلا يستجاب لنا Why we make dua and our duas are not accepted? Or oh, Imam, or oh, 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 Shaykh. So Ibrahim ibn Adham al-Balkhi, rahimahullah, he says that لأنكم عرفتم الله فلا فلم تطيعوه That because you have recognized Allah's there, but you never obeyed him. تم رزانتا الله فكر رب العالمين أسوين كنت الله عبادت بندقي خرسونا الله إطاعت خرسونا الله أنقد تخرسونا you have known Prophet Muhammad, his status, his, his, his rank, but you never followed him. You have learned the Quran, but you have never practiced and applied the Holy Quran in your life. You have enjoyed the blessings of Allah. You've enjoyed the blessings of Allah, but you've never, be, you've never been thankful to Allah. So your du'as are unaccepted. And then he said, وَعَرَفْتُمُ الْجَنَّةَ فَلَمْ تَطْلُبُوهَا You knew the Jannah is coming, is there, but you never asked for it. وَعَرَفْتُمُ النَّارِ فَلَمْ تَحْرَبُوا مِنْهَا And you knew that Nar is there, the fire of hell is there, but you never asked to, 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 uh, to protect you, uh, protect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from, from the fire of hell. وَعَرَفْتُمُ الشَّيْطَانِ فَلَمْ تُحَارِبُوا You knew the shaitan is there, demon is there, but you never fought, you never struggled to, to fight the shaitan. وَعَرَفْتُمُ الْمَوْتَ فَلَمْ تَسْتَعِدُّ لَهُ And you knew the mouth is coming, you knew the death is coming, but you never prepared. You never made any preparation. You had no zad. Um, so, وَدَفَنْتُمُ الْمَوْتَ فَلَمْ تَعْتَبِرُوا You buried the people. مَنْ شُرِي تُمْرَ دَفَنْ خُرْسَوْا مَوْيَ تُخْرَ دَفَنْ خُرْسَوْا بَرْ تُمْرَ كُنُوا لَسُنْ نِسُنَا شِكَّ نِسُنَا زَيْ أَلَّا بَكْ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ مَرَيْ دُنْيَاتْ فَرَيْسُنْ فَرَشُورْ كُبْشَلْبَشَمَ يَلَّجْيَا you, you forget your own faults, mistakes and errors, and you keep on searching the faults of other people. And that's a cause, and these are the causes for dua to be not accepted by Allah, according to Imam Ibrahim ibn Adam al-Balkhay, rahimahullah. A very profound to I mean, prof thoughts are there in the quotation that you've done, uh, you've, you've said here. Absolutely, right. yeah, yeah. Now, the understanding of people would be, well, I do pray five times, I do go on Hajj, mm -hmm. I do fulfill all that's mm -hmm. requirement. Mm -hmm. But is it that we do not do as we are supposed to do? Is that what it means here? We do not, uh, meaning that dua amman yujibul muttar. So the word ittarar, it means that I have no other choice, I have no other way but the way, but the, but, but the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I have no other source of of uh, solution uh, or cure apart from the source of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we direct ourselves in that manner, in tadarra, in ittarar, uh, in humbleness and humiliation, and with the feeling that I have no other way, that's when Allah will direct us to the right path. We see sometimes people suffer for years from certain illnesses, but they're not in the right direction. They go here, they go there, they do ruqya, they go to homeopathy, they go to... Um, maybe uh, not the true form of ruqya. Yes. Uh, no, they, they do, but perhaps maybe this is not the right treatment for that person. So, but but we, we are lost. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He guides us, then we can go to the right direction for, for, the, uh, for our treatment. So du'as are accepted, but also we have to choose the right Times. Timing. Now, before we move on to the timing, there's other mm -hmm. aspect that we have really touched on mm -hmm. here is that we hide our own faults and um, mm -hmm. our own shortcomings and yes. busy, get busy with mm -hmm. the 
shortcomings of yes, others. Yes. And this is one of a very prevalent in our society, mm -hmm. especially within our community. This is one thing that we look, yeah. take it very seriously. This we is, hide our faults yep. and we big and we portray other people's faults in such a manner that as if uh, we have never both, done such activities or act. Both Burakta Bemar is a big disease in our in our in, in many of us in, as in, in, as people that we always do search for the faults of other people. And I remember a scholar was saying that when you indicate when you um, when you uh, indicate uh, upon, uh, uh, you know at someone with one finger and three fingers are indicating at you. Look at this person; he's bad. Three fingers are telling you you're the one who's bad. So he's, it's a profound um, statement, but it's, it's true. When you uh, point a finger at someone, just know three fingers are pointing at you, that you have, you're full of mistakes. So rather than looking into our own faults, we try and find faults in other people, which is a big disease. May Allah protect us from that. And why don't we be generous enough to let other people shortcoming go through? Maybe we can talk to them, discuss, to them, discuss with them in private, yes. rather than putting it down, out yes, in public yes, domain. Yes, that's right. Now, with the... With the dua to be accepted, mm -hmm. we do know about certain timings that we ne we need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the dua. Yep. Say for example, mm -hmm. most of us as Muslims are aware, of our, aware mm -hmm. about the timing of tahajjud. Yes, yes. And I'm sure there are many other ti um, timings as mm -hmm. well. Yes. Now, how important is it for us as Muslim to take it seriously, the timings of dua to be accepted? And if I have to add that bit, is there an importance to have it to be in a state of wudu. Yep, so um, everything has its right time. Even when we speak to an individual, a person in this world, we sometimes have to choose the right time when we go and speak to a manager, when we go and speak to our, our boss, or maybe like someone who is. So we have to know when to ask and when to talk. Allah the Almighty also guided us and instructed us and he told us the right timing of duas. So part of this um, timing uh, is number one, Duas are accepted after salah, after the fara'id, the compulsory prayers. Faraz no mazir fare, Allah pak rabbul alamine, dua qabul khurain. So this is the reason why Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah, he brought a bab in his, in his, um, in his uh, sahih uh, uh, book. He says, babu dua ba'd salah. He brought a chapter called duas after salah. And he mentioned a, an, 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 a range of duas that are accepted after salah, like Allahumma inta salam, wa minka salam, tabarak tayyadha al-jalali wal-ikram, and so on and so forth. So there are numerous duas mentioned in this chapter of Imam, Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah. Just to relate with that, now a lot of us have the question that, mm. does it mean that we need to do it collectively? Good or does question. Or we need to do good, individually? Good because question. we see a lot of uh, yes. difference of opinion I mean, unfortunately, on uh, Unfortunately, um, uh, our society, we went to a, a stage where we make certain things so big, we magnify them so like uh, big that we make them a, a way to identify whether you make dua what in, school of thought in, in you team, might be associated or with you don't make dua in, 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 in team or collectively. Now, first of all, I want to say that duas are accepted after salah, agreed by all the scholars. Yeah. All the Muslims, du'as are accepted. So we make du'a, Allah, minta salam, minta salam. Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, made du'a. Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, they made du'a. So there are, there are a number of du'as. Now, the question remains whether we should make this du'a collectively or individually. This is a question. Uh, after the agreement, the du'as are accepted. And no scholar that I know says that don't make du'a after salah. Hmm. But to make du'a collectively, question I have seen that there are scholars, those who permitted dua uh, collectively after fard prayer, but there are some conditions, the set conditions. Number one is that they shouldn't think that this is part of salah. Number two, they shouldn't think that this is a sunnah. The Prophet وسلم, he did or you know uh, it's a sunnah method. This is another one. Number three um, is that people shouldn't make it, uh, uh, shouldn't take it to a stage where they think it's compulsory. So upon or based on those conditions, duas can be made collectively. 
Also, there are benefits, like they, they added some benefits of du'as uh, making collectively. Number one is that sometimes I may be sinful. So when we make du'a collectively, so there are so many people who might be pious and righteous. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, accept the du'a, they, he will accept in one go and everybody will be part of that. Also, it could be that some, some of us may not know the right du'as. Like for example, some of the new practicing brothers and sisters, new Muslims just come into Islam. They don't know the prophetic du'as. So what happens if Imam does some du'as like Allah minta salam wa salam and others say ameen, then du'as can be uh, and has the possibility of being accepted. So this is a scholastic um, uh, you know, opinion. But on the other hand, some scholars said, no, it is better that you make du'a uh, individually because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he made du'a individually. Uh, so as I said, it's a mas'ala ikhtilafiya. There is difference of opinions and if we keep it to that level, then there is not any problem and we don't have to fight over this thing. Dua is, is accepted after Salah. It's just that some people are doing collectively and others are doing individually. But we cannot force anybody to make the Dua collectively. That's, that's very important and we can't think this is Sunnah. But at the same time, if we, we should also encourage people to make Dua. Some of the scholars don't even encourage. I have seen there is a tendency that people just make Assalamu alaikum salam, and then they just run away. There's not any dua at all. But we should encourage our Muslim brothers and sisters to make dua after salah. After salah, it, it is encouraged. But we have a tendency that people sometimes make salah and leave and then they start talking. Instead of making adhkar, instead of making remembrance of Allah and duas, they go and start talking in the corridor of the mosque or outside or in the passage of the mosque. But it is important that we encourage our Muslims to make dua. So again, Collective dua is allowed with some conditions according to mm -hmm. many scholars uh, and I've seen in many many parts of the world like Malaysia even in Syria and subcontinent people do make dua um, however if someone makes individually this is fine but we should make basically dua. Let, let's not make it a mean of labeling someone with some school of thought absolutely or, right. or, or, or division that. let's not make a, a source of division yeah. I have seen people are fighting over this oh you don't make dua uh, collectively the other ones like no you, you, you know, um, you, uh, you must not make dua collectively. You're not allowed to make dua. The extreme of both the spectrum. Yes, and I, I believe that labeling this also as a, as a bid'ah generally can also cause division because the word bid'ah, we have to be very careful. It is bad and it is disliked highly because it leads to the fire of hell, as Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said. But labeling somebody as a bid or something as bid'ah, we have to be also cautious mm. because we are actually telling and a person indirectly that you're in the fire of hell. That's right. And now going back to the timing, so what are the So So, so number one is the dua after salah, then also ma bayn al-adhani wal iqama, in between adhan and iqama. So adhan has been given just before the iqama come, we make dua. Prophet Sallallahu said that duas are accepted. Also in the third portion of the night, so one third of the night, last yeah, third. last last third, um, last portion of the night that we make dua to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala because Allah the Almighty comes on the lowest sky and He asks um, the servants that if they need any help and Allah the Almighty is there to help us at that time. Um, someone said like you know, if you haven't asked Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in the right time, that means you're not in difficulties or you're not in need of that help, unless otherwise you will choose the right time. And basically, it means if you don't make the effort of making the dua at the right time, that yeah. means you actually don't require you do, it. You don't, you don't require it. If I it. have to uh, assimilate it, or if I have to do a parallel connection with the worldly matters, if I don't need something at the right time, I would not make any effort. Exactly. Also, when the Imam um, sits uh, in on uh, at the time of khutbah, in between two khutbahs, many of our people, Amra Unekhazanina, we don't know that as a Imam Sabzokhan Khutbadin, to do your Khutbar Mazhar the Shomata, a Shomata Madala Pakrabal Alam in Dua Kubul Horoin, who to Ekhmid Badam in Tuitore, Jotosal Dishambo Amrazi, Amrazi Kakutimotias, request us Allah Pakram Amra Huitampari, and also Amra Imam Hulus Demra reminded the Manshore, the Dua Horalagi, a Shomata, the Ito Baloe, to in between the Adan, in between two Khutbas while Imam sitting. Also, there is a time. Uh, in, on, on, on Friday, there is a time on Yom Al Jum'ah that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala He accept the dua. There is a time on Yom Al Jum'ah that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala the time? accept the dua. So um, no, so that's okay. that's the thing. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala He kept certain things unknown. Okay. So that we just don't 
choose that time and then and then that's okay. it. Even when you we, when we're talking about um, Laylatul Qadr, for example, so Laylatul Qadr, Allah the Almighty didn't give us a specific time or day, uh, but rather He kept it unknown so that we are competing and we are putting uh, efforts. There's hikmah behind it, otherwise we'll specify a particular time and day for that particular aspect of ibadah. Mm. Rather we should strive and struggle for every single day. Yes. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said in hadith, في يوم الجمعة ساعة لا يسأل الله لا يسأل الله أحد فيها شيء وهو قائم يصلي إلا أعطاه الله إياه that uh, whenever a believer on Friday يوم الجمعة makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, then there is a time that Allah accepts his dua. Jazakallah khair. Duas are important. That. Jazakallah khair for that discussion. It has been very important and fruitful discussion. I know there are a lot of things to cover, but unfortunately, the time, as always, yes. running against us, inshallah. Yes. Thank you very much for coming here, inshallah. We shall continue our discussion with a new topic in inshallah. the next episode. I mean, Jazakallah khairan. My dear viewers, with this, we have come to the conclusion of our today's discussion. One of the important aspects that we have learned is dua is one of the very most important tool. One of the things that we have discussed here, if anyone has any sort of illnesses or any sort of disease, it's good. It's right direction to go to the doctor but what we have discussed is the intention and the priority should be correct and right that means we have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first along with going and taking measurements that are there in place for us in this part in this world and secondly the important aspect of our today's discussion is let us not make a small issue a big issue are things that are not even necessary for us to make it a bigger issue let's not make a difference of opinion to be a division within the community with this i conclude our today's discussion inshallah in our next episode we'll be back again with a new topic with a new discussion until then subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh hayyakallah jazakallah kullu khair barakallah fikum may Allah bless you